doorbell just rang. I am not expecting anyone. So when I came to check the doorbell camera, I could see the face of a woman, like the camera that shows who is at the main door of the building. I could see the woman's face wearing a mask. So I immediately assumed that it's the, the hospital coming to test us again. So I just, I just pushed the button to open the door. I didn't actually ask who is it. The person like, I, like opened the, the door and then went, huh? And then closed the door and left. Let's hope we don't get tested again today. Do you want to be tested again? Do you want to be swabbed? So that was unfortunate. Turns out it was the vet that we saw. <laughs> it was the hospital people. I guess they changed into their suits outside of the foyer door so we couldn't see them so they came they tested us but I told them I told them yesterday the nose was very painful so please be gentle today and I went first and it was it was okay today it was just like a like a deep tickle and then it was Adia's turn of course major drama because she was scared because she remembered yesterday but we did it I didn't film it today because I think seeing that once was more than enough and yeah that was the third time I think tomorrow might be the last one so today our spirits are feeling a little bit lower because it seems like it's like not so cold outside I think it's minus four which is not that cold at all compared to what it's usually like we're not feeling so happy today so as if we're not already feeling low enough today I just went on my health app to check and I was hit with a red code, which means that we cannot go into any place anyway until that thing turns green again. Even the dog looks really depressed, but I think she's feeling down because she lost two of her animal companions within a week and she saw, she saw how Maggie died. Like, she saw the whole thing happen. Alia was sleeping, luckily, and I've gotten up at four in the morning and I was just trying my best to make Maggie as comfortable as possible, but I literally didn't know what to do. And yeah, she literally, she, she just died in my arms. Coco saw the whole thing. And then after Maggie was dead and I was holding her, I literally didn't know what to do with her, her body because Alia had to wake up and get ready for school without seeing her, of course. So I had wrapped her, like I had, I was holding in her, in her blankie. So I just kind of like wrapped her and I just put her in a, a spot where I figured Alia wouldn't see her. You know, the house is, the apartment is not that big. So it's kind of hard to hide a, a dead dog in the house. But luckily she didn't see it and Coco did. Like Coco was like sniffing. And then later when I had put her in a box and we were like prepping the like the yard, digging a hole to bury her. Like I was sitting here and I was just like, I, I just couldn't stop like petting her, which is kind of weird, I guess, like petting my dead dog. And Coco saw that too, like she was like sniffing. And then of course, in the days following that whole ordeal, I was crying a lot, of course. Obviously Coco could see that something was not right. And then a week later, the cat also left. Like the cat was adopted and the cat left literally the night before we went into quarantine. She just doesn't seem like herself, honestly. Like she's, she feels pretty sad. I try to play with her every now and then, but she's just like, she's not herself.